Hi, I'm Beth Beninato, and I'm a senior electrical engineer at Drive AI. I'm here today to talk about being a woman in engineering with Sierra Circuits. Uh, yes, I um, have a degree from um, MIT in electrical engineering, and after graduation, I moved to the Bay Area, and I've been here for over 20 years now. So when I was very young in elementary school, we did this really cool project. Um, we all got to make our own radios, um, and we made it out of um, a cardboard tube and wire and a diode and a razor blade. And mine actually worked, and it was really cool. And my sister is sure that that is why I'm an electrical engineer now. <laughs> um, but you know, I you know I was lucky to have you know good projects at school that and. You know, I, I never had, you know, there was never any doubt that I could do whatever I wanted to do. So, um, you know, I kind of set the goal to be an electrical engineer and I took all the classes needed to do it and here I am. So to me, engineering is solving problems. So you can, you know, of course, you know, the big problem that you're solving, you're solving a problem at work, you know, so you're helping your company make the best product for the best price. But people use engineering skills every day, you know, how are you going to fix something that's broken at home? How are you going to manage your time? How are you going to, you know, decide, you know, how are you going to organize your space? And so I feel like engineering is just, you know, is used all the time and I think everybody you know has some engineer in them and maybe they don't know it but it's just you know how do you get around in the world in the best way possible so for me I it's not a problem for me. I've been surrounded by boys and men my whole life. So in high school, I took the advanced math and science classes and there weren't very many girls in the class. I went to college, there weren't very many women in electrical engineering classes. I came to industry, it was even worse. Um, <laughs> there were not very many women at all. My first job, there were no other women. My second job, I had a female engineering manager, which was great but it was still just the two of us. And then we added more people. And in my current job, I'm the only woman in the hardware, in the hardware group. Um, but it's, it's not a problem. Um, I, I compensate by having female friends outside of work. I was in a sorority in college, and now I'm you know, in all female groups. I volunteer with Girl Scouts, which I think is a great organization for young women. So I get my fix of women outside of work, and it's, it's, it's fine for me. Did you have or work a career? So there's always technical challenges. That's what keeps everything interesting. You know, your company wants, you know, the fastest, cheapest, smallest product. So there's always a technical challenge. Um, you know, if there weren't a technical challenge, that would be a problem. You would probably look for something else. Um, but outside of the technical challenge, um, there's also the work-life balance challenge, you know, work can completely take over your life if you let it, and so you need to figure out what the right path is for you, where you draw the line between, you know, how much time you give to work and how much time you give outside of work. Um, I've been very lucky. I took some time off to raise my family, and I've just recently returned to the workforce, and um, I've been very lucky to come back to engineering. I'm very happy. That's really hard for me to answer. Um, I was very focused on my goal and I was determined to make it happen. Um, but that said, there are very few female role models. I don't remember, I really don't remember any teachers or professors that were female through my educational career. And so I think that that can be really daunting for some people. And you know, not not all women are interested in engineering. You know, not all men are interested in engineering. So it's maybe not as interesting to some women, and um, and some women may not want to be the only woman 
in their job, and that you know that might that might deter them. But it's it's worked well for me. <laughs> So my first advice is, please stay. Stay in engineering. Come, work with us. Um, but that said, you know, they should, um, you know, women are just as capable as men. However, if there is something wrong with the environment, you know, if there's, if you're not being treated fairly or, you know, there's not equal treatment for everyone in your workspace, then, you know, tell someone and get out and, you know, find a better place. So I've been very lucky to have exciting projects. Um, when I first started, I worked, worked for a defense contractor, and I thought that was really interesting. And I feel like as long as I'm learning something, then that's you know that's a great place for me to be. Um, after the defense contractor, I moved on to industry, and I worked with printers. And now might be the most exciting working on autonomous vehicles. So it is really really cool to be part of the self-driving car revolution. That is also a really tough question. Um, like I said, I was really focused before. Um, when I was really little, I wanted to be a teacher, but I think that's because I didn't want to be a firefighter or a professional baseball player like all the little boys wanted to be. Um, so I, I feel like I could, I could have gone into teaching. Um, and I've actually, um, like, well, through my kids, I've um, you know, had a lot of exposure to teaching and being a Girl Scout leader and that sort of thing. So I think that that might have worked out, and it still could be something I do in the future. Uh, I see myself still in engineering. Uh, maybe I'll be in engineering management, maybe I'll be an engineering consultant, but I'm sure I will still be solving problems somewhere. <laughs>